Hey there guys, in today's video I am going to be showcasing the enclosure I custom built for my African Bullfrog. So if that's something you want to see a little bit more of, you want to stick around, because that's going to be coming up right after this. Hey there guys, this is Jack over at High Red Bird where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. Uh, and in today's video, I wanted to go ahead and showcase my African Bullfrog tank. Uh, now I'm pretty proud of this tank because I actually did all of the faux rockwork detailing in this enclosure myself. Uh, but Obviously, I love the enclosure, but the most impressive thing about this enclosure is the African bullfrog that's inside of that. So that is going to be Jabba. Uh, I've actually had him since he was about the size of a quarter, uh, and he is currently about the size of a softball. Uh, so he is a very large, very impressive frog. Uh, so these guys are African bullfrogs. You'll also sometimes see them uh, called pixie frogs. Uh, please note that Pixie does not refer to their size by any means, uh, is actually just a contraction of their scientific genus, Pixocephalus. Uh, you end up with a pixie frog that is anything but a pixie. Uh, these guys get to be very, very large. Depending on where they come from, they can range from softball to dinner plate size. Uh, and they are going to be voracious eaters. These guys are strict predators. Um, and they will eat just about anything that fits in their mouth that will pass right in front of them. Uh, so for Java here, he gets primarily insects. Uh, I actually have a Dubia roach colony that is the bulk of his diet. Um, he will also sometimes get uh, other dusted, calcium dusted insects. Uh, crickets he likes because they move a little bit more than the roaches do. Um, he will get things like uh, feeder chicks. He will get uh, frozen thawed uh, mice and he is more than capable of eating anything uh, that we give him with that regard. Uh, in the wild, he would basically eat whatever passes right in front of his face. These guys are ambush predators, so his goal is to sit in one spot and then wait for something to pass right in front of him, and he doesn't know how many things are going to pass in front of him. He can't control what size things are going to pass in front of him. All he knows is if something passes in front of him, he's going to try to eat it. Uh, now, one of the things about these guys, uh, these are one of the only frog species that have legitimate teeth, uh, and I can tell you from experience that they do hurt pretty bad. Uh, I was actually working in his enclosure. I was doing something with a light. I figured he wouldn't be interested in me. Uh, I figured wrong. He decided he was going to jump up. He actually grabbed a hold of my pinky finger. He did not let go, but his weight dragged his entire body with his teeth clasped into my finger down my finger, so I basically just had uh, 9 to 12, for lack of a better term, paper cuts uh, from his teeth uh, that really, really hurt. Uh, and so that was going to be from this guy right here. Now, obviously, he isn't going to have the ability to think, oh, I want to be mean to you, I want to bite you. He, these guys don't do that. He thought it might have been food. Uh, so he went up to jump and get it because for an African bullfrog, uh, either it might be food or it's not important. Those are the only two categories they separate life in, uh, which I definitely understand that and can relate to that many times. Uh, so this is the African Bullfrog. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to open up the doors and show you guys his enclosure just a little bit closer. All right, so here's hoping we can do this without him thinking the camera is food. So this enclosure is a 40 gallon equivalent Exoterra. It has the front opening doors um, for small reptiles, amphibians, anything like that. I definitely prefer a front opening enclosure. Uh, I find that for animals that are potential prey items, if they get grabbed from above or if things are going to get them from above, they're not very, very happy with that. So having a front opening enclosure for those animals that are prone to stress uh, does just help them out just a little bit. So Jabba there, you can see, he is pretty impressively sized. Uh, that's probably about as close as I can get without him trying to eat the camera. And I really don't want him to try to eat my cell phone. 
Now you can see he does have a variety of plants in there and to be perfectly honest, they're not the plants that I wanted the most, but they're the plants that survived the best. Uh, so the ZZ plant over there in the corner, you can see it is actually bending because it is hitting that top mesh. Uh, it's a little bit overgrown for this enclosure, but he has not been able to kill it. Uh, the same for that bromeliad that's right over there. It's a, just a really sturdy plant. Uh, there's some golden ivy that's wrapped around that as well. Uh, this philodendron right here has actually worked into that foam rockwork background. So the background of this enclosure, obviously I painted the entire back of the aquarium black. Uh, and that's going to be from the outside, but if I paint the back of the aquarium black, it's still going to shine through as black on the inside. Uh, and then using polystyrene sheeting, uh, I cut that to size to make it look like foam rockwork. I treated it with dry lock masonry waterproofer, which is a trick that is used for a lot of people who do poison dart frog tanks. So it's already known to be safe for fish and amphibians. Uh, you can tint the dry lock masonry waterproofer with a concrete pigment or a cement pigment. So I did that to create the look of this uh, like faux sandstone or slate rockwork. So not only did I do the background there, I actually using just polystyrene and silicone, 100% silicone adhesive. Uh, now, if you use silicone for anything with fish, amphibians or anything like that, you wanna make sure that it is 100% silicone. A lot of silicone adhesives that you'll find, they're going to have mold inhibitors, and those are gonna be a really quick way to either make your animal very, very sick or even kill your animal, which you don't want. So you wanna make sure that it is something that is 100% silicone. Um, but using the polystyrene sheeting and the silicone, I first created just a cavity to create his land area, and then I detailed that as well. And here we are, he's been in this enclosure for about two years, and that is still watertight, so I'm very, very happy with how that has turned out. Now, he does also have, in this corner, he has a, um, a just a small uh, air-driven sponge filter in that corner with a piece of actual slate rockwork covering it up. Uh, that gives him the ability, he can basically be partially submerged in the water if he wants, but uh, he can still have his, his face out of the water. So he will sometimes be sitting on that corner. It also gives me the ability to hide the sponge filter. Uh, now you'll notice that piece of airline that's coming right up for it. It goes up through the top of the enclosure. I told myself once upon a time that I was gonna go ahead, take silicone and peat moss and just detail that airline tubing so that it looked like a artificial vine. But here we are two years later and it still hasn't happened. So I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, now, at some parts of the rock work, like when we get up there, you can start to see the little bead of silicone. Um, I tried to clean that up as much as possible, but it was just like a little bit messy. Um, so one of the things, as there's a little bit of calcification in the water uh, or on the glass from the water, you know, I try to clean it up on the front glass, but as it happens towards the back, I almost don't mind it that much because it sort of blurs the line between the rock work and the background. Uh, or that black background. So to me, it looks a little bit better. And the important thing to remember when you are setting up your animal's enclosure for things like that is what looks better for you. Uh, so like this piece of slate is absolutely covered in algae. And while, you know, in theory, we should want everything to be perfectly clean, uh, we certainly want everything to be clean enough that it's healthy for the animal, uh, but having things like algae, having a little bit of calcification, to me, it just makes it look a little bit more natural, a little bit more established, so I definitely enjoy that. Uh, so I really do just like showing off this frog. Probably the coolest thing I know about this frog is that, uh, so his name is Jabba. He almost had his name changed to Han Solo because he was frozen. So the building he was in, it was a day that it was 19 degrees outside, his heater gave out. So when I come in in the morning, he is frozen solid. And I mean, literally solid. I could have picked him up and thumped him on the counter. Nothing would have happened. I was convinced that, oh God, he is just completely gone. But I do know that with some temperate frogs, they have the ability to tolerate uh, low temperatures. They can even partially freeze. So I thought, well, We'll give it a shot. What's the worst case scenario? I come in in the morning and he's thawed out and dead. 
um, rather than right now where I'm convinced he's just frozen and dead. Uh, so I came in the next morning uh, after putting him in an enclosure, just a little plastic tub so I could put him somewhere warm. Uh, the very next morning, he was perfectly all right. And anytime my hand moved outside that plastic enclosure, he was trying to eat it. So he was more than okay, but yeah, I have frozen this animal before and he did all right with that. So uh, I also want to point out that, so this is a 40 gallon equivalent Exoterra. One thing that this thing is not geared for on its own is to handle water in the lower portion. Uh, so what I had to do was take silicone and basically reinforce the seams. So you can see on the corners that silicone seam is a lot thicker. Um, it's definitely not as aesthetically pleasing as I would like, but it's definitely better to have that than to have all of his water all over the ground. So this is my African bullfrog enclosure, and I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, if you guys like the bit, this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Um, and I do want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you guys again soon. All right, thanks. Bye.